Welcome back. Um, <laughs> I feel like I should just record an intro and just and just play the recording of every day it gets wilder. <laughs> you know, it's just, I just need to record a and and I could just play it on loop. You know, it's like ah, oh, every day is wilder than the next day, and just start with that and like say I could I could save myself like ninety seconds. Um, anyway, <laughs> welcome back, everyone. Um, you know. I'm going to move on. I got some interesting articles, some themes I want you guys to watch. Um, yesterday, you know, here's the thing. If, if you're not on the morning sessions, man, I don't know why not, okay? 8.30, every morning I'm here, okay? And yesterday, we talked that dip and rip setup on MTP. And here's the thing. I get a lot of questions about what is a dip and rip, okay? On our YouTube... Uh, last week, uh, on our Facebook, on our Instagram, on our blog, it's there. Okay. So I'm going to move on, but I only have so much time every morning. So I'm going to use some jargon. Okay. But this is what I'm telling you there. If you're, you know, we have hundreds of articles on the blog, hundreds of videos on YouTube, on Facebook, everywhere. So if I talk fast and I give jargon fast, there's resource. We, we, I mean, we put so much out there. The podcast, okay? So, I will move on. Anyway, today, MXC, if you were here this morning, breakthrough 12. What did it hit? 15? Oh, 1460. Oh. Anyway, micro float traded four. It's noon. Okay, here's the thing with MXC. It's noon. It's traded 40 million shares. We probably aren't done yet. Okay, so anyway, let's move on to the daily briefing, what we're supposed to be here doing. Um, so, you know, again, what I like to do is bring some, you know, the, the, the idea is looking for trends. This I should rename this the Good News Network, okay? What drives me nuts is you're inundated with bad news. I try and bring you good news. My two agendas on the daily briefing are to bring you usable, you know, good information that's hopefully upbeat, but then also gives you the potential for a profiting opportunity, okay? So starting right off the bat, this Wall Street Journal this morning, um, interesting on Zoom. Uh, many of you know, I'm, I've been super bullish Zoom. I use it. I'm going to use Zoom. I already used it once. I'm probably, I think I got two more Zoom calls today. So there's an article, Wall Street Journal, about families, actually. You know, and this isn't even necessarily a coronavirus thing. It's just people that were living distant. And now a lot of these families and friends are now connecting together because of Zoom. You know, and again, maybe partially because of the stay-at-home order. But a lot of it was just like, hey, I've been talking to my friend from work. Why don't I connect with my buddy from college or my cousin that lives in Texas or whatever? So, um, and, you know, I've been talking about the e-education stuff. I mean, right or wrong, I'm not going to get into philo philosophy of this. Right or wrong, it's looking like we're going to have a lot, you know, of e-education, especially like this fall. You know, I, I think maybe, and we'll see, I think the fall semester, you know, high school, college, it's going to be a weird one. Um, and I think you're going to be a lot of remote learning stuff. So on that note, another article I wanted to bring up, um, Slack. Um, Slack's pulling hard late, you know, uh, after the IPO, but um, they just did an antitrust claim on Mr. Softy. Okay, you know, listen, I love Microsoft. I'm an old school Microsoft fanboy, old school Bill Gates fanboy, but there may be nobody, <laughs> you know, and this is, you know, this is me being an old school tech guy, you know, there may be nobody that's more uh, monopolistic than Microsoft, you know, through the years. Uh, again, love the company, love the stock. They're probably going to crush earnings tonight, but this is interesting one to watch. If, if Slack wins this, um, it's, it's a, it, you know, it's some a fight over, uh, you know, Microsoft Teams and Slack. And, you know, hey, Microsoft has a history of, of doing this type of stuff. So um, 
something to keep an eye on. You know, again, Slack, the stock, WRK is the ticker. It's been range bound for months now. But I think if you have, if you see this antitrust stuff continuing to truck around and this starts breaking out, could definitely be interesting. Um, next one, uh, these, these SPACs, you know, if, if special purpose acquisition company, you guys know these have been some of the best, biggest movers in the electric vehicle space. Uh, my boy, Bill Ackman's got one coming, the biggest ever, uh, Bill Ackman's Pershing Square Holdings, the largest special acquisition company ever raised, Pershing Square Tontine Holdings, $4 billion and offering 200 million units at 20. Um, not sure if there's necessarily a trade opportunity here. I just want you focusing on SPACs, okay, SPACs. And, and when you got, you know, now we've had, we had several of them. You know, uh, Nikola was one, SHLL, SPAQ. They were all big runners. And now when you got somebody like Bill Ackman that comes in, it adds legitimacy to the space. So, and what is, you know, remember, what's sketchy penny stocks, sketchy low-priced 101? Coattail riding, okay? You know, this is, a, a, you know, it, the analogy I'm trying to make is it's just like every, just like when every sketchy low-priced stock was going into big cryptocurrencies. Then every sketchy low price stock was going into coronavirus. Now it's electric vehicles. Now it's SPACs. So again, I don't know if there's necessarily going to be a trade opportunity in taint, in Tontine Holdings, but I want you watching SPACs. Okay. Um, oh, uh, again, another thing to keep an eye on this worsening. China situation. Um, you guys know I've been really cautious, maybe too cautious, but I've been really, really cautious on overnighting or swing trading uh, China-related names. Okay, and listen, I got, I got no beef, but you know, I got, I got no dog in the fight. Okay, but you see this news with the China consulate burning documents. Now the U, the Feds are kicking them out. You know, there's been a lot of talk in the Senate. Trump's been talking about possibly delisting these China plays. So this is the lesson. If you're, again, if you're, if you're, if you're a swing trader, if you're a longer term holder, just be, if, if you're looking at a China issue, just, I just want you being really careful because in the short term, Things don't look that great, okay? <laughs> and I just don't want you, I don't want you buying some Chinese stock and then maybe you got a job, maybe you're busy and you're not looking at it every day and then all of a sudden stuff gets worse and you get the, you get handed the bag, okay? That, that's probably my biggest point. So um, last one of the day, um, U.S. existing home sales rose 20%. Um, you know, you guys know I've been talking about the whole back to work thing. Um, I am, so just a little bit of context. Remember, I used to own a business. Um, we, we did a lot of subcontracting with like construction contractors because we did, we were an IT firm. So we would do a lot of, uh, you know, data cabling. You know, now everything's replaced by Wi-Fi. We did a lot of data cabling, a lot of fiber optic. So we used to subcontract with a lot of, you know, excavation contractors, concrete track contractors. We used to put up telecommunications towers. So we crane operators. So what I'm getting at is I know a lot of contractors to this day, construction contractors, concrete excavators. Everyone is so busy, so freaking busy. I mean, you, you can't even get a call back from most of these guys. Construction, I think, is going to... Now, obviously, it's up 20% because May was so bad. But we're getting back to work. And people... I mean, mortgage rates. Have you have you seen mortgage rates? I mean, 3% or whatever. So I think there's going to be a building boom. And the, the construction space uh, is, is, you know, the, the KB Homes, 
the toll homes, you know, all of the, 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 the cat, you know, caterpillar, deer, okay? Again, these are all longer-term ideas, okay? I know a lot of you guys are bringing up sketchy penny stocks. <laughs> Remember, my goal in the morning is to talk about sketchy penny stocks. We'll talk about, like, GNUS in the morning, <laughs> but this the, the idea behind these is a little more bigger picture idea. So anyway, um, last thing I do want to go over, we have another IPO today, JAMF, um, interesting business. They actually, um, they, speaking of IT companies, they do IT services specifically focused towards the Apple market. Um, check out their webpage, interesting business, great client list. Um they're really bragging about their remote workforce as well as remote education type stuff. So JAMF is today's IPO. Currently pretty choppy, but you know, we almost never trade day one IPOs. What you're looking for those is for them to kind of shake out and then start to trend. So um All right, let's take a quick peek at the VWAP scan. And then BLNK. Nice. Okay, so if B BLNK is my main VWAP hold scan idea, uh, BLNK, if this breaks 8 in the afternoon, I think solid setup with their EV news um, with risk on BWAP. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Again, um, look at MTP yesterday. Look at MCZ today. These things have been hot, man. So, um, all right. Have a great day, everyone. I'm going to jump off and re record a podcast. Oh, yesterday's podcast. Go to SteadyTrade.com. I'm, I'm about to record another one, but um, with Tango Baker. Awesome guy. Found his niche in reverse splits. He was a steady trade, uh, steady trade team student for two years. Check out yesterday's podcast. I had to miss it because of travel, but people are raving about it. So it's on all our social media or go to steadytrade.com. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning.